from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for theCUBE. This is Silicon Angles Media's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host George Gilbert, big data analyst at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Martin Hall, Director of Marketing and Business Development, big data issues at Intel, formerly the founder of Karmasphere. Um, if you know the history, they've been in the big data space for a very long time, entrepreneur, working at the big company into the blue chip, the bellwether of the tech industry, uh, Intel. Welcome to theCUBE. Nice to see you, thanks for having me. So obviously Intel's been in the news, the death of Andy Grove was really kind of the highlight of, of the industry has been talked about and you know, his impact on the, on the, on the entrepreneurial market was uh, amazing, uh, a good manager, I told it how it was. Um, that's kind of like what's going on now in the big data world is people kind of want to know what the hell's going on right now. Is there a tomb, is, there, is Hadoop going to kind of be a feature of the ecosystem? So I want to get your take, is Karmasphere, we covered you guys really on, we've been seven years at Hadoop World with theCUBE and we've watched the transitions, we've seen the grow and we've certainly watched the success of, of, of Karmasphere and then you, uh, acquisition by Intel and now see Intel, big investment in Cloudera. So Intel's got their hands on Intel tried a distribution of Hadoop and then and went with Cloudera. So Intel is in the middle of all the action and certainly had a great investment in the cloud business uh, as a company, but your role in the industry has been uh, entrepreneurial and now it's a big company. What's your take? I mean, you've been on the front lines, now you're with the big resource company in Intel. What's your perspective on where we are right now? Well, a couple of things I'd like to pick up on from that opening. You know, first of all, Andy Grove, um, he was an innovator. He was an innovator, obviously, in silicon, but he was an innovator, you know, beyond silicon as well. So there's a lot of conversation internally about, you know, his passing, what it means, what his legacy is. And I've inherited some of that, you know, in, in, in my move to Intel. And I understand a lot more now about Intel as a corporation than I did when I was an outsider. You know, if somebody had asked me a, a year ago, do um, you ever see yourself working at a company like Intel? My answer would have been no. I thought of Intel as a silicon company. Um, and it's been a revelation to me in the discussions I had before I joined the company and the time in the company. This is a company that, you know, we, in some respects, we, you know, we've taken for granted as sort of powering the digital infrastructure, but its role and its influence um, is huge, inc including in big data and analytics. So you mentioned, you know, what it's done with Cloudera, for example, so that investment was on the back of its own, you know, initial foray with its own distribution of Hadoop and then recognizing that a partnership would probably make more sense. Um, but it's very interesting as an entrepreneur and as an innovator, you know, to go from 15 years of entrepreneurial startup experience to go into an organization like Intel and realize that it is an innovator, it is an entrepreneurial company, it is investing in and recognizes the central role of analytics in humanity and business transformation and start to see and be, be a part of what Intel can bring to It's a to great bear. company. There. You mentioned the, the society, this, the corporate citizenship is off the charts. We had Angel on earlier. She's doing the women in tech and they have a whole workshop. They have real cadence of metrics. Is it, is it as metrics driven internally at Intel as people talk about? I hear that all the time. I've never, never worked there, but I hear everything's data driven at Intel. Is that true? It's, you know, it's certainly process and people. I mean, you don't make silicon, right, without having really honed processes internally, and those processes apply to everything that Intel does, how it goes about its business internally and externally. So the degree of you know, professionalism, the quality of the people, the, the level of innovation across the board, and as I said before, not just at the layer of silicon. Intel has this rich history of working in open source software and getting involved as you know, something of a neutral sort of Switzerland within the marketplace and being able to make, you know, big moves that impact all of humanity and business organizations. So I'll get your take on the industry because one of the things we were saying yesterday in our opening, uh, George and, and, and Peter Burris, who's our head of research at Wikibon and I were talking about the three things that we are seeing right now, the maturization of the tech, the path of some sort of digital business model or application, and then the operationalizing of big data in, in the enterprise and the customer base. Um, what's your take on those three things? I mean, ma the maturing of the technology, you know, we had Jerry just talk about how MapReduce is kind of being sunset, but less than 10 years old, the dupe, you're seeing, you know, Spark rise up in, from, in, in place of MapReduce, yet the ecosystem's developing. What's your take on the, on the tech maturity of the ecosystem here? Uh, well, I think there's two vectors of that maturity. I mean, on, on, on the one hand, you know, a lot of the data platforms themselves are maturing, but there's a high degree of innovation. 
and one of our challenges in the, as an industry is that you know that degree of innovation across vendors, the ecosystem of vendors and open source projects creates complexity for consumers of this technology. So that complexity, I think, is daunting for enterprise organizations. And let's face it, we're still at the beginning of this transformation that enterprises are making, not just to being data-driven, but I think increasingly of it as analytics-driven. Because the data, having a place to, to store and process the data is one thing. You've got you to perform you know, some, some algorithms on that. And that's sort of the function of analytics. How about the past? Because obviously analytics is low-hanging fruit for some obvious business models, but, but the operationalizing it then is the next question. I mean, are, where's the progress bar in your mind on, on some of those things like operationalizing big data uh, for the companies? We're early, you know, we're all early days. We all kind of see that, but what's your take on well, that? Well, so, I mean, I think there are several aspects of operationalization, right? So number one, you know, IT folks who are worried about platforms have to worry about um, ease of deployment, they have to worry about management, they have to worry about orchestration, they have to worry about security. I think there's been enormous progress um, over the past several years on those data platforms in terms of that level of operationalization. But solutions are built from multiple components and you know, individual enterprise organizations are confronted with an enormous amount of complexity and I think our job in the industry is to, is to really make it easier to consume the data and for especially data scientists and developers to work with that data to construct the insights. And I had an interesting keynote at Strata this morning that was talking about, in context, the importance of applications and surfacing insights in context in applications. Um, and that, to me, was sort of a fascinating observation that certainly resonates with us uh, in the work that we're doing. So you mentioned two, two vectors of simplification that were needed, and the first one being sort of how to consume all the components of these analytic uh, tools and infrastructure. But the, the second one I wanted to key off on that related to this uh, keynote, um, embedding the analytics in applications. Um, one of our research themes that we've uncovered over you know, now a period of a year is that we don't see packaged applications that are um, predictive or prescriptive analytics growing up anytime soon that are broad-based. So, how can Intel, as a steward of the community, help foster at least the growth of like embedded analytics that can enhance what's deployed already? Well, so you're hitting on a key initiative that Intel essentially has commenced over the last two years. So in addition to the investment that we made in Cloudera, which was all about helping foster the acceleration of you know, the development and deployment of, kind of enterprise-ready data management platforms, what we recognized was that ultimately, if you're going to surface the value of predict predictive and prescriptive analytics and applications, we have to make it easier for data scientists and developers to use that data that's stored in those data management platforms. So at the end of last year, we launched a new open source project called Trusted Analytics Platform, which is focused entirely on that, bridging from the data stored in these now enterprise-grade secure data management platforms but basically filling the gap between that data management platform and the surfacing of those insights and those analytic um, artifacts, if you like, within applications and making it easier for data scientists to work in an environment with other people, other data scientists, and to be able to publish their insights as consumable artifacts by developers that they can use through APIs and services. So it's all about accelerating that road to the surfacing those insights in applications. We, we um, work pretty closely with IBM and, and at, go to their conferences and they highlight their work in that area, if I'm understanding you correctly, with um, notebooks, computational documents that yep. you know, are meant to be shared, but that surface um, analytic capabilities in a much more consumable way. Is that something we would be looking forward to from Intel? Yes, I mean, it's here, we've launched this as, an, as a community open source project. Um, and it is all about you know, the democratization of access, not just to data, but analytics and collaboration between those two key communities, data scientists and developers. Because it's interesting that you know, there's that McKinsey study that said you know, we're going to be two million people short of data scientists. And, you know, and if you need them, you're going to have to come to us or IBM. Um, you know, it's kind of ironic, but it's like, well, we can make the tools better. But the tools today are still pretty fragmented. You have to do a lot of stitching, you know, together to get a tool chain, you know, design time or runtime. Where do you see 
the industry now, and where do you see you know, Intel helping us get to over the next 18, 24 months? Well, again, that's what we're trying to do with this trusted analytics platform is create one integrated environment where that whole tool chain that spans everything you need from ingestion through data preparation through the exploration um, and work the data scientists do, and then the, the consumability of the insights that they create. So sure, you know, we'll continue to drive you know, skills um, and address skill shortages, but as much as anything, it's about making the existing technology more usable by the existing data scientists and developers. Okay, so just to follow on more, one more item on that, is it uh, infrastructure that helps the existing tools plug together better, or new tools that were designed from the ground up to play better together? That, that question is about what is Trusted Analytics Platform? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a software, think of it as a software layer. So the way I like to talk about this is yeah. you've got infrastructure, right? So you've got infrastructure that goes all the way down to silicon and servers and software-defined infrastructure. On top of that, you've got the data management layer. So, you know, Hadoop, for example, and what Cloudera do. Right. Um, but then at the analytics layer, you've got all these tools and technologies, many of which are open source, that are hard for people who are new to this environment to figure out, well, what do I need and where do I get it and how do I stitch it all together and how do I make sure that we've got you know, security that's consistent end to end and top to bottom, right? So there's that complexity issue again that confronts the, you know, the data scientists who are new to this environment. It's our job to make that simpler and making it simpler is about addressing you know, the fact that there are many moving parts that you've got to make available in one place that the right constituencies can come together within. All right, I want to ask you a, a personal question. Obviously, at Commerce for you guys, again, we're early, doing some great stuff. There are a lot of new people coming into the industry who might not be married to the concept of Hadoop or might not know the history, certainly the 10-year anniversary. I saw, you know, uh, the stuffed animal getting, you know, duplicated, Doug Cutting's uh, <laughs> original, original uh, toy that was named Hadoop. Yep. Um, they're coming in, and they don't have the history. Um, what would you share with to those folks that are getting into the business about the, where you've, we've come from, what you've learned, and what you've seen, and wh how would you advise them to be good participants in the industry and uh, knowing kind of what's happened, not knowing all the politics and the dogma and whatnot, how we got here is irrelevant. What we, what we've, we learned, and how would you apply that advice to people entering the market now? Well, and I sort of, I, I reflected a lot on my career joining Intel and what I've been involved in over 25 years in software, um, and I think that's perhaps more true of what we're seeing in this big data and analytics space than anything I've seen before, which is that it's all, it's all about community. It's all, all about you know, ecosystems working together, whether it's ecosystems of developers and data scientists, you know, innovating in open source projects. It's also about you know, individual vendors, I think, recognizing you know, as a group that our job collectively, if we're going to grow this market and address this complexity, um, is to collaborate. We want to compete, obviously, in the free market, but fostering collaboration um, is really, really important, and open source you know, is one very, very important element of that. There was, um, you know, many people look back at the rise of the internet-centric companies and the open source movement, or the explosion of the open source movement beyond just the OS level as, you know, scale and cost driven, that, you know, you couldn't build a Google you know, on Oracle software, um, even if Oracle was scalable enough, it just wouldn't, you know, the, the, it was not cost competitive. Um, when we build out clouds now to handle this, you know, the data volumes that are growing exponentially, and we build out the edge, you know, for, for IoT, where we're gonna filter out a lot of the information, are we gonna face a similar cost constraint in using, um, in, the architecture that dominates, you know, 95% of the world right now in terms of, you know, Intel in the cloud and whatever maybe Arduino, you know, on the edge. Do we, you know, does there have to be a, a price arbitrage to get closer to, you know, a different cost performance curve? No, I, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I think we have to focus a lot on, you know, the economics of open source. I listened to your, you know, previous guest talking a little bit about this open source doesn't mean free. Clearly, there are you right. know, business models built around open source. That's the community angle. Right, that is the community angle, right? But open source is, is not just about cost. It's also about facilitating you know, innovation and enabling communities to you know, the look, look at the realities of sort of integration and cutting across boundaries. And I think that's one of the hallmarks of you know, the big data and analytics space. You look at enterprise organizations, they're having to look again at what does it mean 
to be a data and analytics driven organization. It's not just about technology boundaries. It's not, I mean, it's all about siloing, right? We're breaking down silos here. Yeah. And that's about collaboration. It's about aggregation of data. It's about aggregation of technologies. It's about aggregation of analytics. But it's also about aggregation and cutting across bound, you know, organizational boundaries. And it's also, you mentioned the community, that's, that's where the fostering of the innovation and with collaboration actually not only breaks down the silos, it's a very efficient self-governing mechanism while giving people the opportunity to do new stuff and be better, right? So it's the ultimate accelerant because, you know, that, that's gonna, not gonna, it's gonna keep things moving. And agile is perfect for this. So when you think about agile uh, development in a group environment, that just completely keeps things moving along. And I think that's the heartbeat to me of innovation. Uh, I agree with you 100%. Um, Final wrap up, I'd like to get your perspective of the show this year, uh, get your final word to share with the folks out there who aren't here, who are watching live, over a thousand people watching right now, who aren't here in, in Silicon Valley at this event. What's the vibe? What is the theme? What's the, what's the smell in the air? What's the, is it the big guys? Is it the big, is the big guys rich getting richer? The startups growing? What's the overall, just encapsulate your perspective of what's happening at the show. Well, I, I probably have a fairly <laughs> unique perspective. I don't know if you know, I was sort of, I worked with O'Reilly closely to sort of conceive of Strata. I was on the original advisory board, so I've been at pretty much every Strata event. So I've seen this, you know, this, the growth of this event, and I take the temperature every time I come. What's new? What's changed? And I think, I mean, we touched on it earlier, there's, some, there's maturity now, and it was very much kind of a technology kind of garage feel early on. Now it's very much, and then there was a phase when it was all about sort of, you know, the startups, but now we've got maturity in the technology, we've got maturity of some of those startups, we've got larger companies recognizing that this is transformational, including for Intel, it transforms Intel's business, you know, both internally, internally how it operates and externally, you know, in terms of how it serves its customers. And I think really that's the kind of the hallmark now, everything is under this, this one tent of strata. You've got technology innovation, you've got investments continuing, you've got early investments starting to, you know, to mature, and you've got, you know, all the major vendors in the world participating because they know this is where you come together, you know, yeah. to learn and do business. And of course, the Cube was present at creation of the original Hadoop world prior to Strata coming on. We've been, we haven't missed a Strata either. We'd love to come here and promote the event um, with the Cube. And, and the community here is growing. And what I'm excited about, as you mentioned, is that it's growing and it's not just Hadoop anymore. There's a lot going on around Hadoop yeah. and things are, are blooming. So uh, great, great time. Thank you for sharing your insight. Really appreciate it. Uh, we are here live for Big Data Week. This is our Big Data SV Silicon Angles event in conjunction with Strata Hadoop happening right across the street. Uh, we're extracting the signal from the noise, bringing you more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>